Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn the difference between direct cut and scan to cut data. These are two settings that are commonly used on your scan and cut. We are going to be using a stamp set from this month's Paper Pumpkin Kit called Sending Hearts. When I opened up this kit, I saw that first of all that there was this cute little snail stamp and I, I, for, I wanted to make lots more of these little snails. So the way to make the snail is by using direct cut. And then I saw these little cards and I thought these are beautiful, but there were only four of them, these little pieces for the elements of the card. And you, there's a stamp, this the stamp here, that you put inside of it. And I, of course, said, wow, wouldn't it be great to make a lot of these hearts the right size so that I can stamp inside of them. Okay, so for that, we're gonna use scan to cut data to make more than one heart. And so let's get started. We're gonna use direct cut to cut out the stamped image. And then we're gonna use scan to cut data to cut out not just one heart, but to cut out several hearts. So we're gonna take a stamping block and we're gonna put the snail on it. And by the way, if you have this month's add-on kit for this paper pumpkin kit, there is an add-on kit with little boxes and there are a lot of little snail embellishments that come in that kit. So I just thought, wouldn't it be great to make my own little cute snail embellishments? So we've mounted the photopolymer stamp from the paper pumpkin kit. All paper pumpkin kits come with a stamp set. And we're going to stamp it onto a piece of basic white cardstock. This has replaced, we used to have what's called whisper white. Now we have basic white. It's a little bit whiter than the whisper white, still works as well. I did a comparison on my channel recently. We're gonna ink it up with memento black ink. I've been using the stamp, but you still want to probably, I don't want to mess up my cute little mat here. I'm just going to still stamp onto a piece of paper just to make sure I have, and I'm actually going to use my silicone mat as well. Yeah, I have good coverage. I'm just making sure I have good coverage. The first time you stamp, you make sure you have good coverage. Put your little silicone mat under there. If your table, especially if your table is not flat. Okay, I'm just tapping on the ink. Or if you have a really big stamp, you can turn your ink pad upside down. I sometimes like to just do it that way, just to make sure that I'm inking up right yet. See, it gets darker as you stamp. So let's stamp a few snails for good measure. Okay, Memento Black ink is great because you can then color your snails with the Stampin' Blends alcohol markers and they won't run. Okay, we'll talk about the differences between the scan, the direct cut and the scan to cut data now in context. So what I'm going to do is pull my machine over, my mat's already loaded, and I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to scan and we're going to cut these. Now whenever you have a stamped image and you're going to cut it out like this, you wouldn't need to, you wouldn't need to actually save these shapes. There's, there's no reason to save the shapes unless, I mean there's a reason, but I'll show you, that's in a different context, but it's better to cut out the exact stamped images and not save the shapes because you, you just stamp them and you cut them out. And I like to color them later. So in the case of not needing to save what, you've, what you're scanning in, and in that case, you're just gonna use what's called direct cut. It means you're gonna directly cut out your images. You're not saving any of the information. You're not storing it. You're just storing it temporarily on your machine, but that's it. I'm trying to tilt the camera without knocking off my video recording so i think we can get this we're gonna i can even lower this a little bit of a different angle there we go so i'm using the sdx 25 you can follow along with whichever model that you have because all models of scan and cut have this feature of scan and then we have so when you turn on your machine you're going to see pattern and scan we want to scan and all the models of scan and cuts have direct cut and scan to cut data okay so the main difference between these two the, the main difference is that direct cut is you're directly cutting something out that you scan. You're not going to store it later. Although what's confusing is it does ask you to temporarily store it. So we're going to click on direct cut. Oops, go back. Direct cut. And it's asking where do you want to, you know, this is just temporarily. Where do you want to put the data temporarily? And you just, just select your machine because it really doesn't store it. It just puts it there temporarily. Okay, and we're going to cut it out and you're never going to see or hear from this data again. 
Once we cut out the stamped images, the data is no longer there. We don't need it anymore. That's why we use direct cut. Okay, it's very quick and efficient. So the scan area is 12 by six, that's fine. Always use black and white recognition mode as a start because it doesn't take as long as the color recognition mode. But if you do wanna change either the scan area to 12 by 12, which you don't need to because I only have something on the top of the mat, or whether you wanna change it to color recognition mode, you do it right there where you click on the settings. But color recognition mode always takes longer and so I hardly ever use it unless maybe I have a special pattern paper that's colored and then maybe I might use it. Okay, so what we're doing is we clicked on scan and it's scanning in the images. We're gonna click okay. Now that did a really good job, we have the snails. All three snails were outlined. So what I wanna do next is just, we're gonna, if you have any extra bits on your mat, some dirt, you can ignore small objects, but I don't think I have any extra things that were scanned in there because I used a nice clean sheet of basic white cardstock, making sure that's in focus. Let me turn off this light. Yep, no, it's okay. The light doesn't bother. So because I have a nice three snails there, and I think that's fine. You don't have any extra bits. We don't need to ignore object size. I'm gonna click on preview. And now we're going to put an outline distance. We're gonna click okay. Put a little outline distance around the snail. So let me get the ones I'm gonna show you the ones that came in this add-on kit. These have even a bigger outline distance than the ones I'm gonna put. I'm only gonna put an outline distance. This is the one I cut out earlier. I'm putting an outline distance of 0 0.04 on these snails, just to have a little bit of white around them. If I want them to look more like these snails, it might be a point, you know, 0 0.08 possibly, but I think I think it's fine to be 0 0.04. That's the, that's the outline distance I tend to use all the time. So I'm gonna cut out these three snails with a 0 0.04 outline distance. And I'm gonna click OK, OK, and cut. We're gonna click Start. You don't need to change any other settings on your machine. This is an XDX model, so it's using auto blade technology, meaning it's just testing now how deep the blade needs to go, and it's gonna cut it. If you're using a CM model of machine, you wanna use a blade depth of four with regular basic white cardstock and a blade depth of five with thicker whisper white cardstock, maybe even up to a six. But I'm using the very, the regular basic whisper white cardstock. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll just say that again. So if you're using a CM model machine and you're using basic white cardstock like I am, you would just use a blade depth of four. I'll put that in the description of this video at some point. Can't promise. All right, so now what we're gonna do next is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move the machine for a minute and take this off and I wanna leave the machine loaded, okay? I'm just gonna take these off and we're gonna replace the snails with, we're gonna do what's called scan to cut data next. But let's, let's take this off and see, my mat's very dirty, so it's good to use a nice big clean whisper, whisper white cardstock and then I don't have to ignore all the extra bits that get scanned in. You're gonna see how I need to do that in a minute though. When I just, when I take off this piece of whisper white, by the way, you can take these little snails off with your little spatula. But when you take off the Whisper White and now you scan to cut data, you're gonna see that all this extra stuff gets scanned in now. All right, so in summary, let's get a piece of paper to contrast. Okay. In summary, you're gonna use direct cut to just directly cut out your stamped images, directly cut out your pattern paper. When you never need to save this, this shape, you never need to save this information. Okay, that's why you would use direct cut. It's quick, it's easy, we just did it, and we're gonna use these snails in a minute. But now let's talk about scan to cut data. So we can directly cut out this heart if we wanted to, and we would use direct cut, the same exact method I just showed you. But I don't wanna just, I don't wanna cut out this heart. Okay, I don't wanna cut out this heart. I'm gonna explain why. Not this exact heart. I wanna cut out hearts like this heart. So let's go have a heart. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back, click on home. I'm gonna go I'm gonna now talk about scan to cut data. Okay? So we're gonna go to scan, scan to cut data. Still I'm using the top of the mat, black and white recognition mode, and let's get that scanned in. I used a little piece of tape to make sure that my little paper didn't slip. Because remember I only have four of these in my paper pumpkin kit and they're so beautiful and they're foiled and I said, I don't wanna mess those up. 
I like those the way they are. I don't want to cut that particular heart out because it's on a nice sheet of paper. It's on a nice piece of cardstock. It's a, here's another one of those. Like I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to cut this heart out. It's already foiled and there's nice little printed hearts and flowers over there. So I'm leaving this as is. I don't want this one cut out, but I would, but I said to myself, self, boy, would it be great to have a lot of those hearts to make, to make a lot of those hearts. So immediately in my mind the the, what the, when you have a problem like that, you only get four cute little pieces of paper in one kit and you say, oh, I would love to have more of those. When you would love to have more of something and you want more of a shape, that's when you're gonna use what's called scan to cut data because you're actually gonna get this heart into the machine and it's gonna become your data. And when you have that data, you can then manipulate the data. So now we're gonna, so we're, the options are for scan to cut data, we can select, this is the one we want, the first option, we can select just the outlines, which we want, we want just the outline of the heart. We can select the inside and outside of the heart. That's if we wanted to make a, a hollow heart. We wanted to cut the inside out and then the outside out. That would be like the, the second option. And this one selects all the lines on the mat. I don't like the third option, I hardly ever use it. It's a hot mess. So let's, I mean, it just selects a lot of extra lines for me and I have to edit them out. So we want the first option, which is selecting just the outside of the image. Okay, so now you're like, wow, what a messy mat. Yes, so you can get in there and sort of make a selection so you don't, you're not scanning as much data. Okay, so that's one thing. You can ignore object size. So we just want really just the outline of the heart. We're gonna ignore object size. And it, it does take longer and sometimes it takes a minute to react. I got that one because this takes a lot more memory scan to cut data. And even though, you know, so it takes a little bit longer to react sometimes your buttons. I'm gonna ignore objects. This heart's a couple inches tall, so I can ignore anything like an inch and a half, that's fine. And it should get rid of all these little cute flowers. And I don't wanna scan these in, they're just too small. They're too small to deal with. I don't wanna scan in dots and heart, dots and flowers and all that. I just want the heart. I just wanna have a heart. And some, see, I'm clicking okay, but you're not hearing the beep yet because the machine's taking a minute to react because it's using up its memory now. Okay, so I did click okay. Now it's asking, where do you wanna store this? This isn't like the other storage. This isn't like where you wanna store your snails like we just cut out. This is actually where do you really wanna store it? It's gonna store it there. So if you store it on your machine, it's gonna stay there. I like to work off my machine when I can. You can store it on Canvas Workspace as long as your computer is registered to this machine in Canvas Workspace, or you can store it on your USB stick. I, if you're gonna store it on your Canvas Workspace, you can access it and then you can manipulate it further. And I'll tell you why you'd wanna do that later. So just keep that in mind. But I'm not gonna do that for this tutorial. I'm all about this tips and tricks and I wanna get do these basics with you. So we're gonna store it on our machine. We're storing a heart on our machine. Okay, and it's called 168 file 168 okay and my machine just went off hopefully it got it before it it's um i have a lot of things stored on my machine so sometimes you know you give it some commands and it's like whoa memory's getting kind of full i probably need to delete some files so it should just be here i don't want to i want to keep rolling with the machine and see hopefully my file is there and if not i have the one that i did for trying out before this video all right so now it's going to go ahead the machine turn back on and we are going to now you've you've stored your heart you go up to your machine it might be that same day later on the next day what's nice is now i have a heart we're going to go to retrieve data you turn on your machine you click retrieve data from where retrieve it from your machine and it should be the last file so i'm jumping down to the last file and there's the heart yeah that's the one i just scanned because that's 168 remember it was what file 168 so let's leave the screen up for a second because I need to explain why we just did all this extra work because you're probably like, Paper Chef, you, why didn't you just use direct cut and cut out a heart? Well, that would be fine I and mean, I could have used direct cut to cut out one heart, but the advantage of scan to cut data is because I want to make more than one heart. I want to make many hearts. Okay, so let's go in and let's get this file. We can do a lot of things now that we have it in scan to cut data. We can do things that we couldn't have done in direct cut. Let's click okay. One thing you couldn't do in direct cut is you can't, in direct cut, 
You can't move. Oh, it actually saved the next one. That's kind of fun. I wonder why it did that. Okay, but um, it, it shouldn't have only saved one heart. But anyway, the one thing you can do is move your hearts around. Right? You can't do that when you're using direct to cut. Whatever you scan in, you can't move it on the screen. Okay, the other thing you can do in scan to cut data, object to edit, is you can go to this little plus, object edit plus, and you can make several of them. Let's make, uh, let's make a, let's just make a few because, here, we'll make, just for the time it'll take to, uh, to cut them out. I don't want to make you wait too long to cut them out. Okay, so then, now you can, now you have several hearts, which is the real advantage of it. Okay, and now when we go to cut them, I, I talked about cutting area. You could cut them on a certain area of the mat, but we're just going to use what's called the auto layout anyway. We have a whole piece of, we have a whole piece of whisper white. I don't need to worry about my cutting area. I got this whole giant sheet of whisper, oh, sorry, basic white, not whisper white. So let's take, let's click OK, and I'm going to talk about the auto layout. This is the auto layout setting. I could fit a lot more hearts in here, but let's just click on that. And what it'll do is it'll make, it'll turn these hearts right side up, upside down. It'll make them turn different ways if I use this first option and it'll fit them in the best, it'll use the paper most efficiently, okay? So that's the first option. And that's called auto layout. It, it means that it, it takes the hearts and it makes them lay out in an efficient manner, okay? But I'm just gonna go ahead and delete one of these hearts. Let's, let's click okay, because I just don't wanna make you wait too long. We're gonna delete one. I just wanted you to see the auto layout. Okay, so you could put, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could put, 16 of these hearts on the mat, okay? The other auto layout feature, the other auto layout function is, this one turns them right side up and upside down and fits them on the mat, and this one turns them all right side up and fits them on the mat. You wanna use these different auto layout settings when you're trying to make stencils and you want your shapes to go a certain way. In this case, I don't mind which way my hearts are going because I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them out. Okay, so I need to, now I'm gonna remove this from the mat. This is the, the piece that we used to scan in. We don't wanna mess this up because it's really nice. And I'm going to now load the piece of Whisper White into the mat. We're gonna click on cut. It might need to load my mat even though my mat is, it was kinda loaded, but I don't think it thinks it's loaded. Anyway, I'm gonna load my mat. We're going to cut out the four hearts. And we're gonna click start. And then what I'm going to do next after these, these four cut out is I'm going to show you what I do with them. I always show what I do with these objects at the end of my videos. I always show how to use the skills that you just learned and apply it to your own crafting needs. And whether you have this paper pumpkin kit or not, you can still follow along with this tutorial and find something to use for direct cut and something to use for scan to cut data. Now, before we leave the machine entirely, I need to talk about a couple things that maybe my more advanced users are wondering about. Okay, so this is what you're wondering about. Maybe, maybe you're wondering about this, maybe not. I personally was wondering about this. So I said to myself, self, why don't I just make my own hearts? Forget scanning in this heart. Let's just see if I can make my own heart using the shape that's built into the machine. Okay, so that might be something you're wondering about. And by the way, when I go back here, I can save this file. Let me just do that. And I'm going to overwrite the file that has the one heart, and I'm going to save it now with four hearts. So let me end that. I'm done with the direct cut, and before I talk about this next little thing, I just want to show you something. Before let's before I move on to this little topic, retrieve data, and there's the one with the four hearts at the end. See? Now I'm saving it with four hearts, just so you know. All right, now, let's just now go back to the beginning. So you might be saying, Paper Chef, why don't we just make a heart that's this size? Okay. Like, and then use it over and over to stamp your images. So I did try that, and I went in there and I made a heart, and I could tell you the measurements of this exact heart that I scanned in, but it doesn't matter because really it doesn't work quite the same way because, so here's this heart. It's not the same shape heart for stamping in with that stamp. So here's your heart. You can put that on your mat, and I did resize it. I'm gonna show you that. So here's the ones I cut out using that method. I, use, I cut out this heart from here, resizing it to be the length and width, but it's just not the right shape part. Here, here it is right here. It, because the nodes, because the node is a little different, okay? So if you take my Canvas Workspace A to Z course, 
then you can you'll know that you can take take this node this is an SVG file this is a scalable vector graphic in other words this can be edited and you can take this node in canvas workspace and move it up and kind of manipulate the shape to be the right shape heart but for the machine itself this heart is not the right shape heart okay and then furthermore I want to talk about one more thing which you don't need to do for this tutorial but one more thing is when you have when you retrieve your data if you have an XDX model machine see I'm using an SDX model this doesn't work in CM models and you retrieve your data and you're in scan to cut data there's your hearts you can actually go in and edit your hearts one more thing you can do with scan to cut data is go in and edit go to object edit and you can use this here this feature here to make an extra outline around your hearts and a good outline is either 0 0.04 or 0 0.08 and I'm going to show you what that looks like on my actual cards you know like 0 0.04 is just a really thin outline around your hearts okay and when you do that though it's going to create the heart you have to make sure to remove the first heart so you click OK and you want to take that heart see you want to make sure that th that you remove the. you just put an outline distance but it keeps the original heart there so of course you would want to edit out if you want to cut this with an outline distance you want to if you want to make all these have outline distance of 0 0.04 0 0.06 0 0.08 and make these hearts bigger so you can layer them that's fine but you got to remember that the original heart is still there you got to you got to get rid of that I'm not going to do that now but I'm going to show you in my cards how I did that so again scan to cut data is used it's better than direct cut and if you want to if you want to store like for direct cut we don't store it we're just cutting out directly but for scan to cut data we're going to store our files retrieve them you can resize your files go in here resize hearts you could take your heart object edit you could resize your heart you can resize it you can duplicate it like we did we can duplicate it we can put layers on it okay you can put layers on it you can fill it in with color I mean well that's if you're going to be using your drawing feature I mean there's so much you can do with scan to cut data now that you have these shapes in your machine so if you are going to use the layering then in this case I use the pool party to make my layers on my hearts I just made all my hearts have bigger outline distances so I would have layered hearts so that's just one more thing you can do with scan to cut data that you can't do with direct cut. I didn't save that to on purpose. I didn't save that. So now let's talk about what we're going to do with these images and why I, why I wanted these in the first place. And then I'm going to move my machine out of the way and we're going to do some coloring. So I'm going to remove this mat. I'm going to remove this, not mat, this uh, piece of basic white. Okay. You could get 16 on a sheet. You can even have this extra piece left over. So that's great. So get your little spatula. And get your hearts and if you try to fuzzy cut these I mean good luck right these are these are perfect hearts these are perfect they're perfect they're the size of this heart here they're perfect so now we can do something with our paper pumpkin kit so this is dedicated to all my paper pumpkin subscribers who I know a lot of you also have scan and cuts so what I'm about to show you is going to be pretty darn cool whether you have what's called a Stamparatus positioning tool or whether you don't, it's this is going to be something cool that you can apply to what we just did. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to have to tilt my camera. I hope I keep on recording. That's the problem. The reason I don't really go live too much with my scan and cut, I don't think I ever do, is with my scan and cut tutorials is because I have too many times I have to change the camera angles and I'm afraid that I'll stop recording. So what we have is our hearts. We have our little snail. And we talked about layering. So snail first and then heart. So here we got these cute little snails. And we use Memento Black Ink, I said, because we want to be able to color them with the Stampin' Blends. And the Stampin' Blends I'm going to use are coordinated with this kit. And the kit in the Sending Heart instructions, when you look on the back, it says, oh, here, it talks about it. It says, coordinating colors, basic black, gold foil, petal pink, poppy parade, smoky slate, and white. So what do I do? I got out this, this um, blends, and I'm going to use, we're going to make the little back of the, I usually use dark, dark light. No, I was doing light dark. Okay, that's fine. Light dark, the way I arranged them. I just have this little blend tray, I arrange them. I'm going to use the dark blend for the outer heart, the darker blend. 
of the poppy parade. I probably could have used the thin side. This is pretty, pretty thick coming on. It's coming on pretty thick. I'm laying it on thick. Okay, let's take that. Let's use the thinner side for that inner heart. So even though it's a dark blend, it has a thin side and it has a thick side. Now I can use the thick side for coloring it in. So that is the dark poppy parade. Now I could take the light poppy parade and I'm gonna use circular motions to sort of fill that in. And now we have a cute little snail that you can use to embellish your card with. And as this dries, the colors blend together nicely. I use pool party for the, the eyes. Now pool party, it doesn't, it's, it's actually, this, this uh, snail goes with the snailed it sweet. And even though the snailed it sweet uses coastal cabana, I just thought pool party looked a little better for the eyes and for the background hearts, even though it's not one of the coordinating colors with snailed it. And it's not one of the coordinating colors with, with that other sweet called snail mail, but it still looked good. So sometimes you just have to do what looks good versus coordinating colors. I think pool party looks good on my snails. I think Coastal Cabana, although it says it's a coordinating color, I think Pool Party looks like it's a closer color to my little embellishment kit. So what I'm using now is the dark petal pink to make my snail, and I'm gonna now take the light petal pink and color in my snail. So that's what you do with your snails. Make lots of these. I did them in different colors. Sometimes I put the Pool Party, sometimes I made the inside of the snail in Pool Party. And then sometimes I made the outside of the snail, the heart part, heart the back. So it's like it's used some combination of these colors. And I also have a retired blend color called Pink Pirouette. And that Pink Pirouette looks a lot like the Blushing Bride that goes with the uh, Snail Mail Suite. You have to use the thin side for these little stalks. Now if I'm using Pool Party for the inside of the snail, I would, I would then not color in the eyes at all. Because I don't want to color in the eyes when you know, with another color because I don't think it needs it because it is already kind of light color. So I'm just using the thick side here and I should use the thin side for the inside heart just to kind of. So it blends it up and look at that nice blending going on as, the, as it dries, you get this nice blending going on. So Memento Black is great because it doesn't run when you're using alcohol markers such as our blends. This is a remo color remover, remover. This color remover Make sure, oh sorry, it was a little bit dark there when I was coloring. I mean, a little bit light there when I was coloring. This color remover, removal tool is when you want to lighten up something, you can use this to lighten up or you can use it to sort of erase your, your color when you make mistakes. So I always keep that nearby when I'm coloring. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. So that's our direct cut. That's what we're going to do with them. Here's now what we're doing is scan to cut data. What we're going to do with these. We are going to take these and we're going to use our what's called a stamparatus tool. Chapter four. Okay. Put it, I got to put my microphone back on. I had to reach over to get that. So this is the stamparatus tool, and here's my. You know, I'm always full of tips and tricks here. So what I do is there's a grid on your stamparatus. This is a stamp positioning tool. Of course, you don't have this. Use a stamping block. You can take this heart. This is the heart that comes in the paper pumpkin kit and you can mount it onto a stamping block D or probably the stamping block that came with your paper pumpkin kit in the first place. So what I've done is I put a little piece of snail adhesive or seal, seal plus, just to hold my heart still. I don't want my heart to move. I even have magnets. This is my magnet from Stampin' Up. There's a, this, this is a magnetic plate down here. This is the grid paper that came with it. The, I used some extra magnets I had in my craft stash just to hold this paper down. I don't want this grid paper to move because this is particularly, I outlined one heart to make sure I can keep using this. And I, I roughly outlined it. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for, for this, right? There's my heart. Okay, I outlined it and now, maybe I had the hearts facing the wrong way. It doesn't really matter, right? I might've just turned them upside down. They're, they're kind of almost the same on both sides. So what I'm gonna do, just so you know, is I'm lowering this down let me make sure it's still aligned. See what happens from day to day. I think my heart was, I think my heart might have been facing possibly this way. It, this is what's called a stamp positioning tool. Okay, and what I want to do is want to position the hearts. And so over and over again, I can stamp them. Okay, good enough, good enough to show you this anyway. 
So that's still, now I'm gonna take my Poppy Parade ink, open up my Poppy Parade ink, and I'm gonna ink up my Stamparatus. What's great about it is the magnet's gonna hold the paper there, so if I don't get good coverage on the first time, I just lower it down and try it again. I'm gonna just ink it up and try it again. So I'm using Poppy Parade to make the hearts. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. See how it's pulled, it's pulling up a little. I probably could have stuck it down a little better. I ink it up again and I lower it down and now I get really nice dark hearts. And that's the beauty of a Stamparatus. So what I like to do is if I still don't have them perfect, I take my Poppy Parade Blends Marker and, or you could use your stamp and Write Markers and you could just fill in any little white spots. Don't ink it a third time because if you start inking it a third time, you're gonna get some run, some stuff running, some ink running. Perfect. Look at that. Now I'm gonna make these to my heart's content. I'm thinking of making, I don't know, 50 of these. I just think they'll be great on the outside of treats. And a few of them I layer for cards, but for when I'm not doing cards, when I'm just doing treat toppers, I just think that's gonna be beautiful this year to just to just put on treats. And to put on those little you know gift boxes and the, the add-on kit, I mean, they're just gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Okay, so let's do that again. I mean, just so you understand that my heart is that you just put, you just draw your outline of your heart, okay? And you're going to put that on your Stamparatus mat. Make sure everything's lined up. Keep, your magnet's gonna help keep this safe <laughs> or keep that still. And lower it just to, you know, just double check. Making sure everything's good. Okay, I'm gonna lower it. I'm gonna put the Poppy, Poppy Parade ink on it. And by the way, in your kit, you get a small stamping block of Poppy Parade ink, and they actually work better for Stamparatus than my big one. This is actually what comes in the Paper Pumpkin Kit. That's actually easier to ink up your Stamparatus with. It looks like it's a little off, huh? Well, it's okay, I already lowered it, so. I, needed, I think I needed my hearts to flip over the other way. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's good. It's still good, it just is a little deceiving. It seems like it's always taken me twice to stamp these to get them to be exactly right because there are so many hearts. Oh, I don't need to fix that one. Gorgeous. Poppy Parade is just such a fun a fun red because it, it goes, it's so stark. Okay, now let me show you what I did. Let, let me show you because now that I have this ready, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the others. Okay, um, not these. I'm not gonna stamp these because you understand how to stamp these now. What I wanna show you is that I also made a little trick for myself where this card goes. So this is how I got this one. This, the XO is from the, I wanted the X to be first and then the O, but I, I got that from here. I put the O first, but that's okay. XO, XO, hugs and kisses. I put that down in the corner. So let's use one of these little sheets, which I just had out to show you from my paper pumpkin kit. And where, oh, where are my hearts? Oh, here they are, here they are. Okay, so what I did is I made for my Stamparatus, I'm, I put a little outline where this piece of paper goes. So see, I just did that. Little photo corners to get that right. Okay, so you see how I did that? I just put where, where this goes. Just drawing around it. And I think my, my adhesive is still there, so I think we're good. Now I'm just gonna lower it to make sure it's just deceiving because it looks like I'm not there, but I am there. It's just kind of deceiving. So now we're gonna take the ink and we're gonna do that to those pieces of paper. So it's a good little Stamparatus trick for even these parts of your paper pumpkin kit. Now that's not Whisper White or Basic White, so it doesn't have as good of ink absorption as the other cardstock, but you, that's why you might have to go twice to do that one. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. So that's that's why you would, that's how you can use your Stamparatus in conjunction with your paper pumpkin kit. And now you might be asking, because I know I, I ask myself questions all the time as I'm crafting. So why don't you just use your scan and cut to make a heart template? And you can, you can use your scan and cut to make the heart template, of course. Let me show you what I mean. But these are too close together. You could take your scan and cut 
you make one giant heart and make it inside like like I've taught you how to make stencils on this channel many times take one giant heart cut it out in the middle of your mat make a big giant square around it put it on your stamparatus place your heart into it just say like this place your heart into it each time and then you'll have a perfect place to place your heart for to use with your stamparatus however I didn't do that because if I use this as my template then there's there's going to be ink all over the sides like you need to put it with a lot of white in the background so I hope I hope that makes sense I just that's the reason I did it but of course you can use your stamparatus you can use your sorry your scan and cut to make yourself a perfect little place to lay your hearts into each time I just want to color the rest but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep myself from coloring the rest so I can show you my projects and wrap up this tutorial okay so that was the stamparatus trick now let's move this off and I'm going to show you my projects I just created using this techniques that I just taught you. I've only made two cards so far because I've only got the, I've only had the paper pumpkin for a day. So that's why I haven't made a lot of projects yet, but I will be making a lot of projects. And so stay tuned because every month, if you're one of my paper pumpkin subscribers, you know this already, but every month I make a video on all the different alternative projects that I've come up with using the paper pumpkin kit. So I'm just, my head's spinning on all the things I can do with this kit. Okay, so this kit comes with enough supplies to make eight cards. Of course, you extend that by taking your cards and doing other things to your cards. Also, we have what's called Love You Always Treat Boxes. And I'm thinking that I can do a lot with those Love You Always Treat Boxes, which is an add-on for this kit. So here's, what, here's my alternative. This is what the cards look like, and this is what I came up with. All thanks to the scan and cut, I was able to come up with this alternative design. You saw how I cut out a heart in basic white. And then I also cut out a heart in pool party and I just layered it back there to make the pool party compliment. I did this. I colored this with the pool party blends. This little guy is this little guy. It's a little little guy that I just cut out of the stamp set. He's one of these. He's a, he's a cutting out a stamped image, this little guy, but look how well he coordinates with the two little guys, the two little snails from the add on kit, which are professionally printed. I think that's pretty close. To the ones professionally printed they just have a little bit bigger outline distance and they even did some blending on their on their snails as well i used this little stamp for the bottom of this card along the bottom i used one piece of the other card so there's two cards i used one piece to make a strip on the other card i did the hugs and kisses and i used these little resin heart well this these ones came in the kit these hearts came in the kit petal pink but then i added resin hearts from the snail bit suite that coordinates from our new catalog okay and then here's my second example is again I used this one I cut I took the little snail and I colored him with the pool part uh, the poppy parade and the petal pink and I, I did the layering with just a 0 0.04 outline distance with the extra heart in the background of that one just to make it pop added some dimensionals so the heart would pop up on dimensionals and colored and made that extra heart and put the hearts inside Okay, so this uses that extra strip from one of these cards I put onto this card. The extra strip from one of these cards I put onto that card because they're the two card designs. But taking these card designs and all the extra embellishments you made, you can just you can just develop to your heart's content, infinity and beyond. You'll have so many options of what to do with all your extra hearts this Valentine's season. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. on, And I hope you now understand the difference between direct cut used to cut out stamped images like this, and scan to cut data, used to scan in a shape of a heart and multiply that shape so that you can have many other shapes to use to stamp onto and embellish away. Well, that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef.